So what do we do in this situation where we have evidence that there is heterogeneity and we can't calculate a summary effect measure? Well, I'm going to give you an example of just that situation. In this software, what we would do is a subgroup analysis. So based on clinical or methodological heterogeneity, we might have factors that we think are going to explain the heterogeneity. And so we might create subgroups. These are groupings that we think are going to explain heterogeneity. And I have an example here. So here I have an outcome where I have two subgroups. This is the same example. I have trichinomyosis, the vaccine, but I have one group of studies that are done in the old cattle and one group of cattle that are done in new cattle, by which I mean heifers. So really this is a clinical heterogeneity. And what I'm asking the question is, is the association or the effect of the vaccine different in the subgroups because I think that the subgroup is a source of heterogeneity. That is, I think that the old cows probably have a different effect. The vaccine has a different effect in the old cows compared to the young cows. So I haven't shown you how to do this in the software. I just want to explain this idea. So I've organized my, my forest plot now that I have the old cows and the new cows. And the rest of the data is organized the same way. But I'm going to move this across so we can see what we have. First of all, I'm going to go right down the bottom. There's a couple of things to look here. First, we need to start which for this, with this one at the bottom, which is the test for subgroup differences. Now, just as it says, this is asking, is there evidence that the effect is different in the subgroups? Now, previously I was asking, is there evidence that the effect is different in the studies? But now I've split the studies into strata and I'm asking, is there evidence that the effect is different in the subgroups? This is exactly or very similar to, again, the Preslow and Day chi-square test for heterog heterogeneity when you're looking for interaction. So this is the test for subgroup differences. Here's the chi-squared. Here's the degrees of freedom. Here's the p-value. So the p-value is 0 0.02, which suggests that the differences that we see are fairly rare. We would only see differences this big or bigger 2% of the time. So that would lead us to reach the conclusion that we should, that the subgroups appear to have different effects. Now up here, you can see here is heterogeneity and we have the chi-squared here. This line here, this one third for the bottom, that is if we ignored the subgroups and just looked at all the studies together, which is what we've done in the previous two slides. So when we ignore any subgroups and just look for heterogeneity in the studies, there's evidence of heterogeneity. Then I went and subgrouped the data and asked, is there evidence that the subgroups are different? And the answer to that is yes. So now I have evidence that the subgroups are different. So now what I need to do is go and look at each subgroup. And I'm going to start with the young animals first. So what I'm saying is I think the effect of the vaccine is different in the old cows and the new cows. So I'm now basically doing a, a meta-analysis in just this subgroup. And then the interpretation is the same. So here I have five studies and I've got a chi-squared here. 
and I've got a degrees of freedom and here's the p-value for that and here's the I squared. And so what that tells me is that within the new cows or the heifers, there's no evidence of heterogeneity. That means that in the next step, I can calculate a summary effect for just this subgroup. And here it is, 0.58, and here's the 95% confidence interval. So this is the summary risk ratio for just the heifers. And the reason I need one for the heifers is because this number down here told me that the effect is different in the old cows versus the new cows. So here I have my summary effect measure. And then remember the third part of the analysis is to ask is whether that's different to one, which is the test for overall effect down here, 3.48 and the p-value 0.005, which says, you know what, this is not equal to 1. So now I have that information about that subgroup. Now I need to look at the other subgroup. So now I've got to look at the data for the old cows. First thing to do is look at the evidence of heterogeneity. So here's a chi-squared, I've got a p-value of 0.04 and an i-squared of 49. So which suggests that there is some evidence of heterogeneity, which would imply that each of these studies is not measuring the same effect. That would imply in turn that we should not calculate the summary effect measure. And let me just point out, it is calculated because that's what the software does. That implies that we should not necessarily use it. If we decided to ignore that, we could then test whether that effect was different from one, in which case we would test for the overall effect. And you'll see that the p-value is 0.16 which says that this overall estimate of effect is not significant. But above that, it says, you know, these studies, there's really a lot of heterogeneity in these studies among old cows. And so maybe there's some factor, even within these studies, that would explain that heterogeneity. So you might have to subgroup these studies as well. Now, eventually, you have to stop, you might not be able to find any other characteristics that differ here and you might just have to say, based on the heterogeneity, we couldn't calculate a summary effect and we're not going any further. So that is a subgroup analysis. It's very helpful when you do an analysis to present all of these factors as I have here. But it's important that people understand the particular stages. So remember, the first thing I did was look to see if I combined all the studies, was there evidence of heterogeneity? This is this line of data here. There was evidence of heterogeneity. So then the next step I did was try to explain, determine whether the cows, the age of the cow, was an explanation for that heterogeneity. So I categorized the, cow, the studies by that factor, and then I did a test for subgroup differences. And the results here suggested, yes, that was a factor. Given that information, I then decided to conduct an analysis basically within strata. I have one analysis for new cows and one analysis for old cows. Now, how did I decide what the subgroups were? Well, the subgroups are based on factors that you have identified as potentially important sources of clinical or methodological heterogeneity. So if you like, I could have chosen studies that were randomized and blinded versus studies that were not randomized and blinded. 
I could have chosen studies that were case control versus cohort. These are factors that people have to have decided ahead of time that are potential sources of heterogeneity and have to have extracted that data so they have it available. In the next couple of slides, I'm going to go through a more formal lecture about meta-analysis.